So lately I've been getting a couple of questions from people wondering what's the best way to make gynostemma tea? Uh, do you need to boil it? Do you need to simmer it? Do you need to cook it? Do you need to steep it? How much? How long? Etc. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you how you can make the best gynostemma tea as well as answering all of those questions along the way. So first and foremost, we'll start at the end. Let's we'll start with the end product, which I have here in the blender. I have about 12 ounces of tea, which I've already prepared. Now, I did prepare it on camera previously, but uh, because, <laughs> because my camera ran out of battery and ran out of memory space, I had to start over. So we're starting from the end this time. We're working our way back. So that's our end result. You can see it's great looking tea. Uh, next to that, we're going to take a look at what we need. We're going to need, obviously, our gynostemma tea. We're going to need something to cook it in. We're going to need some water. And we're going to need uh, something to strain the tea off with. Now, you can use, you know, if you have a sort of a, a, a tea cup that you want to pour hot water into and then let the gynostemma steep in that and then strain it out from that, that's fine. If you have a tea ball or other sort of tea devices, you can use those as well. Just keep in mind that the gynostemma will expand quite a bit once it hits water and once it starts to rehydrate. So starting off from the beginning, you take about a tablespoon or you know, a small handful of gynostemma. Um, you take that and you're going to add it to your water. Now how much water to use? Now keep in mind, each little tablespoon can produce like three cups of tea. So that's like, that would be 32 ounces. So you could use as little as eight ounces or as much as you know, 24 or 32 ounces. The less water you use, the stronger it will be. The more water you use, it will be a little more dilute. For me, I usually go with about a tablespoon and about 12 ounces of water. That's the best flavor that I like and it has the best effects. You know, more or less, depending on your taste, your preference, your budget, your time, all of those things, all of those variables play, in, play a role. Now, once you have all this in your pot, you basically want to, want to turn it up to high heat bring the water up to just below a boil, meaning it's starting to steam, but it's not you know, bubbling and, and boiling all over the place. And then once it hits that steaming part, turn it off, take it off the heat, let it sit for a minimum of eight or 10 minutes, but really as long as you'd like. Keep in mind that the longer it sits, the stronger the tea will become. This tea I have here, I actually made it a couple days ago and put it in the fridge and let it sit. And just because I was gone, I wasn't here, I didn't have a chance to drink it. So I came home, it's still fresh, it's still good. So I just put it back in the blender and I'm um, gonna consume it now. So you can definitely let it steep for a long time. Just keep in mind, it will, be, will, it will become stronger. <laughs> so if, you, if that's what you're after, go for it. If you like a milder taste, then don't do that as long. But then also keep in mind, like I said, it will expand quite a bit um, in the teapot. And if you're seeing like, what, what is this? What is this bark? That's actually cinnamon bark. Um, it's just been cold and it's been the holidays, so I've just been adding cinnamon bark to my teas because um, it tastes good, smells good, it's, it's kind of warming. Yeah, so that's it. Um, again, once your tea is cooked on the stove for a little while, you will take your strainer, which as you can see, mine actually has tea in it from when, when I just used it. Take your strainer, put it in whatever beverage you're going to be consuming it, and you're good to go. And keep in mind, you can drink Gynostema hot or you can drink it cold, meaning you can drink it right out of the, right out of the pot if it's after it's been steaming, or if you wanna let it cool, sit out, or put it in the fridge and let it cool down, you can do that. It's great either way, just up to you and up to your preference. So again, hopefully that's explained to you step by step how to make tea and how to you know, make the best, and also how to fine tune it and adjust it according to your preferences and according to your situation. Now. One question is if you boil it, say like you turn on the stove and you walk away and you go do something else and you come back and oh my God, it's boiling. Is that bad? Has it harmed it? Has it killed it? No, it's fine. It's just a little, you don't necessarily have to do it. I've honestly done it a few times where I just turn on the, the stove and sort of get caught up doing something else and then come back and say, what's that smell? It smells good. It smells like there's some tea. And I say, oh no, <laughs> run to the, the stove and turn it off and it's fine. You can still drink it. It's not ruined. It's not killed. It's, it's fine. So hopefully that's answered all the questions. If you have any other questions, you can post them below or um, send me an email, whatever is easiest for you. Hopefully this has been helpful and educational and hopefully you're drinking lots of gynostema tea because remember herbs don't work unless you take them. Uh, we can read about herbs all day, which I do, but uh, they don't actually work on us unless we take them. So it's important and a pretty fundamental principle to keep in mind.